Best Practices for Workers' Compensation, provided by the Risk Management Services Division of the Georgia Department of Administrative Services. Workers' compensation is mandated insurance for employees with the purpose of providing income, medical care, and rehabilitation to employees who suffer illness or injury due to their employment with the state. It also provides benefits to the employee's family in the case of an employee's death directly caused by their job responsibilities. The goal of this video is to illustrate why it is important to improve workers' compensation programs, describe what areas a successful workers' compensation program focuses on, and recommend some best practices to help achieve improvement. Why is it important to improve workers' compensation programs? Employees are the most important asset for the state. Viewing things from the employee's perspective informs how a strong foundation for a successful workers' compensation program can be built. Put yourself in the employee's shoes. From the employee's perspective, you want a safe work environment. This includes both the physical environment and tools. You also want to receive job-specific training that helps you work safely so you don't get injured in the first place. If you do get injured, you expect the program to help you recover and provide the promised benefits. However, you also expect your organization to learn from any mistakes and make changes as needed to improve safety. Building the foundation based on this viewpoint leads to a decrease in workers' compensation costs. But why should you be concerned about state costs? When the state spends funds on workers' compensation, that has an impact on what money is available to agencies statewide, so the cost of workers' compensation ultimately does impact your organization. Although cost reduction is a goal, we are not seeking to decrease the workers' compensation benefit itself. Instead, we want to reduce the need for making a claim in the first place, which means focusing on the root causes of claims. Looking at some example statistics for a fiscal year, there were 5,572 new workers' compensation claims, resulting in a yearly cost of $36.3 million to the state. In addition, at the end of the fiscal year, there were 4,789 open claims remaining from that year and previous years, which would result in ongoing costs to the state of approximately $1 billion. These open claims costs are the result of payouts and disability benefits, medical expenses, rehabilitation costs, and legal expenses. The high incidence of work-related injury is driving these costs. During an example year, 5,373 employees became injured, which is 4.38% of the state workforce. Out of those, 1,271 employees lost a week or more of work due to injury. There are many different causes for workplace injuries. Let's look at the costs associated with a few of them. Falls, slips, and trips, 12 million. Strains and sprains, 8 million. Cuts, punctures, and scrapes, 4 million. Motor vehicle accidents, 4 million. Among the related incidents, very few of them would be classified as unavoidable. What areas does a successful workers' compensation program focus on? There are three areas of focus to make our workers' compensation programs more successful. Safety, which aims to prevent injury before it occurs. Care, which deals with taking care of employees after an injury. And recovery, which focuses on ways of returning an employee to regular or transitional work duty. Focus on safety. Approximately 90% of the workplace accidents which occur at state agencies are preventable meaning that accidents rarely just happen. They are the result of unsafe conditions or acts. Focusing on safety means targeting the conditions or actions which cause these incidents. Whether an accident is deemed preventable or not, it should be properly investigated and, where possible, underlying causes addressed. Focus on care. Once an accident occurs, the focus changes to one of care. The priority is seeing that the employee receives immediate and appropriate medical attention. Both management and regular employees should be trained in what to do when an accident occurs. 
Reporting the accident following a standard process is also important. The accident itself serves as a basis for learning for both the individual and the organization. Why did the accident occur and how it can be prevented in the future? Focus on recovery. After an employee has received initial medical care, recovery becomes the priority. Getting an employee back to an active lifestyle where they can return to work for transitional or regular job duties is the focus. Following physician recommendations is important at this stage so that the employee patient moves into participating in recovery activities at the appropriate time. So, what are some best practices for improving the workers' compensation programs? Involve management. Having managers, supervisors, and team leaders play a central role in developing a culture of safety is key to improvement. What are some benefits? Leaders see managing safety as a vital part of their job. Employees at all levels own accountability for making safety a priority. Leaders are better able to show empathy with injured employees. Build a strong safety culture. Safety considerations should be part of everything that your organization does. Planning should automatically include discussion of any effects on safety a decision might have. Make it part of the norm. So, what is safety culture? Safety culture is the sum of what an organization is and does in the pursuit of safety. It is the product of individual and group beliefs, values, attitudes, perceptions, competencies, and patterns of behavior. What are some benefits? Fewer employees become injured, disabled, or killed. The focus on safety issues builds an expertise in identifying and eliminating other problems. And employees develop pride in their organization and are more positive about work. Empower employees. Give employees the tools and responsibility to report safety issues and reward them for doing so. What are some benefits? Safety issues and risks are more quickly identified. Employees are more likely to think about their own personal safety. And management has more data needed to direct their efforts. Participate in the Comprehensive Loss Control Program. Help your organization establish standards for improvement and gain access to state-funded tools and programs. What are some benefits? The program provides resources for employee education and training, including training managers in the three-tier program for workers' compensation. It helps your organization establish a more effective return-to-work program and allows access to various programs that help improve safety and decrease workers' compensation costs. Communicate proactively about workers' compensation and safety. Create visible and regular ways of communicating with all employees about workers' compensation and safety issues. What are some benefits? It ensures that employees know their rights and responsibilities, decreases the likelihood of litigation related to safety, and shows employees that the organization cares about their welfare. Build successful stay-at-work and return-to-work programs. Injured employees can, in many cases, still make a positive contribution to the work within your organization. Focus on what abilities the employee still has available, regardless of their injury. Create transitional job roles and allow flexible duties for injured employees. What are some benefits? It helps your organization by allowing injured employees to contribute, makes employees have a more positive view of their employer, and allows you to provide help to areas of your organization that are overtaxed. Report injuries in a timely manner. Train employees on how to report injuries and the importance of doing so in a timely manner. Whether or not an employee is responsible for reporting, they should understand the process so they know what to expect. What are some benefits? Speeds up the delivery of benefits to the injured employee, improves the effectiveness of medical care, delay can lead to further injury or even death in some cases, and decreases the chance that the employee's injury will turn into a long-term disability. Maintain contact with injured employees. Stay in touch with injured employees. Supervisors should check in with injured employees to show empathy and care for the employee. Answer questions that the employee might have. 
Supervisors should stand ready to assist in helping the employee through the return to work program if that is an option. What are some benefits? It gives the employee a chance to ask questions. It shows the employee appreciation and respect and helps the return to work process go more smoothly. Think outside the box. Enhance your stay at work or return to work programs by coming up with other ways you can help injured employees reconnect with your organization and contribute to it. Some options are think beyond the work unit. An injured employee can possibly help in other areas. Skill enhancement. Did the employee need training in other areas and there never seemed to be enough time? Mentoring. Can the employee help mentor others who have less experience and skill? Special projects. Are there any special projects going on in your organization that could use some extra help? And individual skills. Does the injured employee have other skills they could use? Allow the employee to tell you how they can contribute. What are some benefits? It employs injured workers in a positive manner, gets work done in a creative way, and uses resources wisely. See your organization as part of the whole. Each agency and organization may work in their own siloed area of responsibility, but the health and efficiency of each one affects the health of the others. Understand that the quality of your workers' compensation program does have an impact on the whole state. What are some benefits? Help your organization by working in cooperation with the state. Serve as an example to other organizations within the state and know that you are doing the right thing. For further information about workers' compensation or the Comprehensive Loss Control Program, visit doas.georgia.gov and navigate to the indicated areas of the website listed below. Thanks for watching Best Practices for Workers' Compensation.